Hey everyone. All right, um, I'm gonna give folks a second to get tuned in here. So this is a live broadcast and uh, what I'm gonna talk about in this video is holding losers too long. This is something that a lot of traders struggle with. It's something that I struggled with myself when I got started. Uh, I did a poll earlier today when I was uh, trading during the morning show. I asked people, you know, what, what do they feel is their biggest uh, struggle? And uh, holding losers too long was a big one. So I thought I would come on and um, comment a little bit on that. And um, so, so two things. So as you guys are getting um, tuned in, hopefully you hit the thumbs up. Hopefully you're subscribed to the channel. If not, hit the thumbs up, subscribe to the channel. That way when I do pop on and go live like this, you'll actually get the alert uh, if you're subscribed that I'm live. So I see people tuning in right now and saying hello. So thank you guys. Hi. Hi, how are you? Yep, cut your losers short. Easier said than done. Uh, I'm gonna show you some metrics uh, from my trading uh, during this uh, broadcast. This is a right here, a stretch of about, um, uh, what this was 378 trades. And during this period I lost $167,000, which is not an insignificant amount of money to lose. And this is, um, important because it's going to talk this speaks to the topic today holding losers too long what you can see is that my average winners during this period of time four minutes long my average losers um, in contrast seven minutes long so I was holding the losers longer and ultimately and you can see that right there ultimately what that was doing um, was it was a, taking a bad trade a trade that already wasn't that great and just letting it go further against me. And as a result, my average losing trades were $3,200, while my average winners were only 1,800 bucks. So we would call this a negative profit loss ratio. Uh, now, since I'm gonna talk about some of my metrics, I do wanna keep it in context. I think that that's important. So for instance, um, where I sit right now, since January 1st, 2017, um, I'm sitting right now at a net profit of about $8.39 million. So if you're wondering uh, whether or not I'm qualified to talk about day trading or to talk about metrics, I, I think that I am. This is uh, a total here and I'll, um, I'll switch the view in a second, but this is, um, let's see, a total of 16,000 trades. All right, so the topic today is why do we hold our losers too long and what can we do to change it? I'm gonna run the intro and then we're gonna jump right in. Okay, so you can see the full screen now of my, uh, my metrics from this period of time. Uh, the and, and this is now um, this is now from 2017. But if I go back to uh, January 1st, 2021, to January 15th, which was the first two weeks of the year, that was when I had this um, negative profit loss ratio and took some of these really big losses. So one of the things that I had learned, um, both through my own experiences and from working with students who are trading markets from all around the world is that it is very very common to have a negative profit loss ratio it is very very common to hold losers longer than you hold winners and and just generally to hold losers too long and it all stems down to fear and so to elaborate on that what's happening when you're trading Every single trade you take, you know inherently it has the potential to be a winner or a loser. But when you take a trade, and all of a sudden it goes against you. And it goes against you quickly and you're down, you know, let's say in this case, $2,500. And you know that your average winner is only $1,800, so you know you're already down more than you would typically make on a winner. All of a sudden, there's this shift in mindset from just cut the loss, break out or bail out, to hold and hope the hold and hope uh, the hope is of course that it turns around because until you press that sell button 
there's always the chance that it could turn around. Once you press the sell button, the worst thing is you press the sell button and then it bounces right back up a moment later and you would not have taken the loss if you had just held it longer. And there are times when that happens and unfortunately that is the market giving you a positive reinforcement of a bad behavior. You get rewarded for really doing uh, something you shouldn't do, which is hold and hope, or even worse, average down on a trade. And then how that rolls into the negative profit loss ratio, because you're holding your winners too long, what is typically the case for most traders like myself, and I can pull up, uh, I can pull up an example of a, a chart from today, if maybe that's helpful, but. Uh, what's very typical for me is, you know, I'll buy a stock at, let's say, whatever, $6. And my target is to sell half at $6.15, another half at $6.25, and the rest maybe up to $6.30, $6.40. So my average profit on it is probably only about maybe 20 cents a share. All right, so 20 cent average winner. But if I get in it at $6 and it drops immediately to $5.80, I don't stop out. I don't stop out because I think, well, it could come back up. It's at 580. You know, as long as it holds 575, that should be okay. It'll curl back off 575, back through 585, 595, will be back through six before you know it. It's okay, I'll hold it. Or if it drops down to 560, I'll think, well, I'll at least see if it holds the half dollar because the half dollar is five, of 550 is typically psychological support. So I'll give it to 550. And then it hits 550 and I say, well, but the VWAP is 545. So I'll give it another couple cents. If it holds the VWAP and gets right back above the half dollar, then I'll be fine. And then I cut the loss at 535 as it breaks the VWAP. And just like that, I've lost 65 cents a share, right? I got in at $6 and I'm stopping out at 535. Whereas if I had uh, had a winner on it, I would have only made maybe 20 cents, maybe 25 cents a share. And so it creates this negative profit loss ratio where your average losers are bigger than your average winners. And from a mathematical standpoint, it is very hard to be profitable when your, your losers are, are bigger than your winners. And so one of the things that, of course, uh, I do for our Warrior Pro students, in our classes, we break down risk management and we talk about the metrics of a successful trader. If you can understand the metrics of a successful trader, then you know what you're striving for, right? You know what to look for. And so when we talk about risk management, one of the things that we talk about are profit loss ratios. We talk about it pretty extensively because if you don't understand a profit loss ratio, you don't understand how to put statistics in your favor to make it a little bit easier to be successful. And so, in other words, uh, if you're trading where your average winners and your average losers are exactly the same, one to one, you need to be right 50% of the time to break even. And that, of course, is before commissions. Right? That makes sense. That's, that's straightforward enough. Okay, well, um, how about when you um, risk uh, one, let's see, when, you, when your winners are only $1, but your losers are $2 or two to one. So your winners are 100, your losers are 200, which was exactly the case right here, right? My winners were 1,800, my losers were 3,200. So I basically had an inverted profit loss ratio. It was, it was negative. Okay, so in that scenario, let me pull this back up. Oh, let me pull this back up. I would have needed to have been right 67% of the time just to break even. Of course, we know I lost. My accuracy during that time was 54%. The fact is 67% accuracy. So let's look at 2021 as a whole. I've been averaging 68%, right? Uh, well, this is 2020 uh, and 2021. Uh, actually, this is, this is weird. This is 20, January 2020 through January 2021. But in any case, so $4.4 million net profit, 68% accuracy. You know, so if you're trading on a negative profit loss ratio, you really are setting the bar very, uh, very high for yourself. And, and that's not what you want to do. You want to set the bar low. You want to make it easier to be successful. So what you would then strive for would be to risk 100 to make 200. 
right? Now, that may not be something you always achieve, but when I'm looking at a trade, I ask myself, do I have the potential to double in profit what I'm risking? And if I don't even have that potential, I don't even want to take the trade. So I at least need that potential. It doesn't necessarily mean it's going to happen, but I need that potential. So this was a stock um, that I traded today. So let's see. Um, so on this one, for instance, um, my entry on this was right down here. And this was, uh, no, I'm sorry, my entry was, um, was right uh, was right here. So this was an entry off this yellow ascending support trend line. And it's a little bit of a complicated uh, setup, but uh, it's a momentum setup. So my entry was down here at about 1065. What was my stop? 1050. It was at the half dollar. So I set my stop at 1050, which meant I was risking 15 cents. You know what my target was? 11 bucks. It, and back of mine was a break of 1110. And this popped up to 11, 11.03. And I got my two to one profit loss ratio on that. The risk versus the reward. This was a good trade. We had another one, uh, GWH today. This one uh, earlier this morning, some pretty big momentum on it, as you'll see. So uh, on this one, first one minute candle to make a new high right here. All right, so that was 16.75. So for instance, on a stock like this, with an entry at 16.75, stop would have been 16.50, again, the half dollar. And because the high a day was 17.19, that was the target, a retest of the high a day, which is a nearly two to one profit loss ratio, almost 50 cents. But it ended up going all the way to 18. So when you trade the right type of stocks, you're more likely to have uh, stocks that exceed your, your profit loss ratios uh, in terms of your, your base target. But this is something that's really important to be aware of. So. Um, what I wanted, to, and I wanted to make this kind of a, um, a short video because uh, what I have for you guys, I want to give you a link where you can watch a two-hour session that I hosted um, with my trading coach and with four other profitable traders. So it was um, five of us uh, and my trading coach. We were all sitting uh, on a call and we were talking about this very issue. So this is a two hour long, um, it's like a trader psychology session. And these are things that we do on a pretty regular basis uh, for our Warrior Pro students. So I'm gonna give you the link uh, where you can check it out. Let's see, I'm gonna uh, paste it right here. And I'm gonna put the link, um, um, I'm gonna put it on the screen so you can just take a look at it. So I wanna give you guys a chance to download uh, and stream this, um, this episode. So this is um, straight from the Warrior Pro class. Uh, it's a video. So the way we've set up the class is for those that aren't familiar, we've got our Warrior Starter course and then we've got the Pro class. And in the Starter course, and I've actually got the curriculum right here. So in the Starter course, uh, the starter course is 15 chapters long and chapter 14 is trader psychology so in chapter 14 that's when we bring in ted ted has been my trading coach for a very long time since i began trading uh, and that's where I, he comes in and he talks about the fact that success in trading is probably 50 percent skill and 50 percent mental it's up here i mean it really is so important to get into the right headspace, the right mindset. So recognizing and understanding emotions in trading, learning uh, the stages of learning to trade, the strategies to support your best trading, meditation, mindfulness practice. And then in the pro class, we come back to these topics. We have uh, chapter 17 where I have interviews with profitable traders. So these are students um, who have their profitability badge. We've got uh, three, I think three interviews here with students who have a million dollar badge, uh, have verified a million dollars of profitability. We have one that's at 750,000, a couple at around 500,000. And um, that was when uh, we decided to have this session uh, with Ted. So I think you guys will get a lot out of it. I think you'll enjoy it a lot. I, I can sit here and talk about trader psychology and the uh, sort of mentality of holding losers too long and selling winners 
too soon, uh, really until I'm blue in the face, and I don't mind talking about it for a few more minutes or asking some questions from those that are uh, tuned in. But I really encourage you guys to stream that episode uh, of, that I recorded with um, Ted and then four other students on holding losers too long. I think it's really going to be uh, a big um, uh, eye opener for you because th the fact is, we know that most traders lose money. And I've already said this, you know my results are not typical. Most traders lose money and we have to figure out why. And one of the things that is very common is holding losers too long. So uh, there was a question about whether I ever um, got into the habit of holding losers too long, like holding, holding stocks uh, for multiple days and things like that. So for me, and this everyone's different when they start trading, but for me, when I got started, I didn't have a lot of money in my account, and I was often trading on, uh, on leverage. So when I was using leverage, I couldn't afford to hold on leverage overnight. And many of you guys know that. You can trade on leverage as for day trading, but you can only hold on very small amounts of leverage overnight. And I just never felt comfortable holding on leverage overnight. So for me, it forced me essentially to close my positions at the end of each day. You know, I, 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 occasionally I would get into a trade that I would hold for a couple days. It was very rare, it was not common, and it was not successful for me, which is why I really stopped doing it. But some traders who have larger accounts will fall into this habit of getting into a trade and it starts to go down and say, oh, well, I'll just hold it and see if it comes back up. And again, that's that fear. It's not wanting to lock up a loss and move on to the next trade. It's holding and hoping. So when you start holding and hoping, and you start doing that on one position, then two and three and four, you know, next thing you know, I mean, just for example, um, the stock CCXI, I'm sure there's, you know, some people out there who might've been holding and hoping. Look at this drop from $48 all the way down to $9 a share. You know, if, and I'm just saying, like, for instance, let's say you took a trade on it, uh, I don't know, you know, around here, and it didn't bounce, and you thought, oh, I'll just, I'll just kind of turn this day trade into a swing trade. Well, next thing you know, you're putting yourself at an enormous amount of risk because the longer you hold it, the more you expose yourself to the potential that bad news comes out, and that's exactly what happened on this one. Now, biotech, pharmaceutical companies, especially ones that are doing clinical trials, these ones are especially risky to be holding overnight, but... It doesn't mean that some traders don't do it. It's uh, holding and hoping. It can be very, very powerful. And next thing you know, you've thrown all uh, discipline and common sense out the window and you're averaging down. You're holding overnight and potentially you're putting you know, your whole account at risk. So I think that's something that you wouldn't think it's possible to have one trade blow up your account or end your career and yet one trade mismanaged where you average down and you hold and hope and where the loss gets bigger and bigger and bigger you know i mean that can be the one trade that that ends it. and it's not worth it it's not worth it to let that happen so you never want to empower um, one trade with the ability to blow up your account or end your career. And ultimately, that means getting really good at cutting your losses. So in that session, of course, um, which I hope you guys uh, stream, you'll hear five different points of view on cutting losses quickly. Uh, it's, um, it's something we all have to learn how to get good at. One of the things that I've said um, over the years is that being a successful trader isn't about making more money, it's about losing less money. So I bet you know every single one of you in here who are streaming, and thank you guys again who have tuned in, who hit the thumbs up button, I really appreciate that. Every single one of you here, you know, you, you think about the path to profitability, and you might think, oh, the path to profitability is I just need to make more money. Uh, well, you know, I need to have more winners. What if and just thinking out loud, what if you were able to reduce your losses? What if you were able to reduce your average losers by 
15%. Now, if you don't know what your average losers are, then that by itself is, uh, I suppose, a problem because you don't know what you're benchmarking yourself against. But right now, m with my average losers at around $1,600, or based on that period of time, it was around $1,600, um, if I could reduce those by 10%, that would be that would be a step in the right direction. If I could reduce them by 20% or 30%, that would be huge. And that would absolutely translate to making more money at the end of the day. And it wouldn't be because I was focusing on winners. It would be because I'm focusing on cutting my losses quickly. Cut the losers. So you have to be so brutal, just totally ruthless, no attachment. These are stocks, and it doesn't matter how big the company is, it doesn't matter if you're talking about Facebook, if you're talking about um, you know, Facebook right here, I mean, this is a significant drop, right? From the high of 378 down to 317, it's a 20% pullback, you know? So, I mean, at a certain point, you gotta say, all right, I don't wanna keep holding this. Now, it depends what your cost basis is and everything else, but it doesn't matter how big the company is or how small it is, you do not want to hold and hope. That's not trading. Trading is getting in, getting your profit and getting out. So today's a day where uh, I did make some money. Uh, I got myself up about uh, $20,000, which was good. I mean, a, a not a phenomenal day, but uh, a decent green day. And I'm, I'm fine with that. And most likely I left a fair amount of money on the table. I left money on the table because I stopped trading at 10 a.m. Now I, I know that uh, because this stock after 10 a.m. ended up going higher, that had I kept trading it, maybe I would have been able to make more. But on the other hand, if you've hit your daily goal, if you've made some money, well, when is enough enough? Take the money off the table because every time you keep trading, you're exposing yourself to the risk of getting caught in a flush, to having one of those days where you go from up 10, uh, 20 grand and you give back half. And it can happen. It can happen to the best of us. This is a false breakout right up here, and it's a pretty dramatic one. So right there, false breakout. Went up to a high of 29, and then drops all the way down to 26. That's a three-point drop, you know? And then it flushes here down to 24. If you got caught in that, and then you were holding and hoping, it's back at 22, it hasn't even gotten back to the high from that entry there. Now, at that moment, that entry might have made sense. It was a bull flag, it was relatively strong. But if it doesn't work, you just gotta let it go. You gotta be just, ruthless. Cut it short. That's it. I'm done. I'm out. So trading is definitely a career of discipline. It's not easy. There, uh, discipline is not something that you'll just learn and you've got it forever. It's something that you constantly have to, uh, to focus on. To, it's a muscle and you've got to keep exercising it and keep trying to keep it sharp and strength, strengthened. I mean, you just can't let your guard down. You let your guard down, and that's when you get complacent, that's when you get sloppy, and that's when you start taking losses. And I say all of that, having done all of that, I've been there, I've had red months, I've had huge red days, I mean, I've gone through it. So, uh, and I thank you guys um, who are tuning in. We've got some Warrior Pro students who are tuning in, and I, I appreciate the, um, the comments you guys are making about the classes. Our goal is to provide you with a holistic education. Uh, I wanna give you some uh, financial literacy so you better understand the equities markets. Uh, we obviously are focusing on day trading specifically. The Warrior uh, Pro class is our flagship course. It includes the starter and then goes into my uh, day trading course and it's extensive. This is a extensive course. There's a ton of content here and this is for people that really want to learn the ins and outs of my strategy and you will learn the ins and outs of my strategy. This is not a uh, course or community where it's just videos of me bragging or it's just a, you know, one little PDF, seven page PDF handout. This is a lot of content and this is taking years to uh, compile, produce and, and create. So we launched the Warrior. Um, this, this first version of the day trade course was um, released in 2000. 14, I believe it was, maybe 2015. Um, this book I taught, uh, I wrote in 2015. This book is How to Day Trade. So uh, for those that 
uh, would like to get a copy of this book, if you register uh, to my workshop, you'll be able to get that. I can give you the link here uh, to this page. If you click right here to register for a free class, you can get a copy of the book. So you guys are welcome to do that anytime. Free copy of how to day trade when you register. Now, for some folks, you'll think, oh, Ross, I don't need to register for another webinar. I've seen a million of them. I already know how you teach. I understand. I just want to jump in. And we'd love to have you jump in, and you can become a student today. We'd love to have you join us. So you can check out the strategy page, and you'll be able to see the curriculum for the starter, for the pro. And these classes are streaming, so you can watch them anytime. And then uh, during the week, we have uh, the chat room, of course, open Monday through Friday, where uh, I'm live trading in the mornings. And then we have mentor sessions uh, every day right now. So you can come in and ask questions and things like that. But in the meantime, uh, I encourage you. Uh, oh, and this is actually right here. Um, this is the episode, Holding Losers and Averaging Down, a special two-hour session with Mike uh, and some of the other mentors. So we had Mike, uh, we had Roberto, Danny, myself, uh, Selena. I thought Jess was on that call, but maybe not. Any, in any case... Uh, so that's uh, what you guys are going to get uh, today, just as a sneak preview. And you can stream that right now. And if you like that and you enjoy this little video and what I've talked about today, and you've checked out some of my other episodes, videos here on YouTube, and you want to take the leap and become a student, we'd love to have you. And at the very least, I hope if you enjoyed the video, you hit the thumbs up. So why don't I do um, maybe five minutes of Q&A answer some questions that folks have. <clears throat> Thank you, Scotty. Vale says, I trade every dollar like it's a million dollars. It really helps. That's interesting. Um, I One of the things that I've said is that if um, if I don't feel confident taking full size, then I don't want to take the trade at all. So, I, it's, in other words, you know, sometimes people will say, oh, well, why don't you just take a start? Why don't you just take a small position? And if I don't feel comfortable taking full size, then there's something about the stock that doesn't meet my criteria. There's something about it that just doesn't, um, isn't good enough. Maybe it's the spread, maybe it's the volume, whatever it is. And that by itself is a reason not to take the trade at all. So if I focus just on A-quality trades, just on stocks where I uh, can take full size, I will do better. So I don't focus, Susan, on percentage gains. Um, some traders may do that. Uh, I don't. I focus on uh, the dollars per share. So I look at the average winners. You know, it's, it's a different way of looking at it, and it's not that one's right or one's wrong. Usually just you would choose one or the other. When you trade lower price stocks, this can be tricky because you could have a lower price stock, and I see some traders mentioning costs, KOSS. So this stock has gone from 1580 to 1888 here in like three candles. So, I mean, this is a, could be a very big percentage move. Uh, GWH was up at one point like 150% today. So those are big percentage moves. Uh, but then there might be other days where you're ending up trading something like GameStop. And so the same percentage that you might get on one wouldn't likely realistically translate to uh, the other. So I focus just on, uh, on average gain or average loser in, in dollar amount. So um, Yogg says for someone who doesn't, who only has a little money, um, for trading and can only trade once a day, what's the ideal uh, cut loss? So this is a tricky one because if, if you have a small account, let's say you've got like $2,500 and you're trading with TD Ameritrade, so you can only take one trade a day, that can be a challenge because you feel like, well, I don't want to get in and then two seconds later sell it for a loss only to watch it bounce back up. That was my one trade of the day. I only got, I can only get one trade of the day. So my opinion on that is, I mean, it's really the same. If you focus on the best quality setups, yes, there will be times where you get in and you do stop out right away, and that's it. That's your one trade of the day, and it might go back up. But if you're focusing on really good quality setups, 
and you know those because you've studied the strategies that I teach or you've developed your own strategy, whatever it is, uh, then you're going to be better off. You're going to be better off. Your accuracy will be higher, focusing on better quality setups. And, you know, when it comes to success, there's a lot of things that factor into a trader being successful. And one of the big ones, which is why this is so um, relevant here, is emotion. And that's why I had Ted do <clears throat> that trader psychology session with us. It's there's a huge component that's mental. And so something that I've noticed um, among our students who have become successful, and we don't track the success of all of our students at whole, at, at large, we don't have access to their broker statements because we're not a broker. So some students voluntarily share with us how they're doing and that's fine, but we don't know as a whole how students are doing. There's no way we could really know with certainty. Uh, but one of the things that I have found among the students who have been successful is that it's typically those, and this is very frustrating, it's typically those who don't need money who make the most money. Now, what the heck is that about? They don't even need the money. And then it just falls into their lap. And what that tells me is it's about the mentality. People that are trading that don't need the money don't put this pressure on themselves that they have to make X amount by a certain date to pay a mortgage payment or to pay a student loan or whatever the case is. They're able to focus on just the skill and the hobby and the enjoyment of learning about the markets. They can take it very slowly or some of them are comfortable taking more risk and they can take that risk. And they don't have this whole second layer of evaluation when every t when they're taking every single trade which is how will this help me pay my bill this week you know am i going to be able to keep my account above five hundred dollars am i going to be able to keep it above twenty thousand or whatever the account is that stress creates a a, a really huge amount of pressure and while it's true that some people under pressure succeed I think what's more common, especially in trading, is that with that pressure, you start trading from a place that's more and more emotionally fueled. So all of a sudden, every trade starts to have the ability to make or break your week or your month. And every trade is either validating that you're going to be okay, you're going to survive, you're going to make it, or is calling into question whether you'll survive, whether you'll make it. And when your back is up against the ropes like that, it's very hard to think clearly. Anytime you have a loser, you start to immediately think, wait, does this mean I'm not gonna be able to survive? Does this mean I'm not gonna be able to pay my bill at the end of the month? And then that invariably is factoring into your decision of do I cut the loss or do I hold it and hope it turns around? So I think that the success rate of uh, traders, and we know it's, it's poor, is probably in some way correlated to wealth uh, distribution in general. The people that are more wealthy will tend to be more successful and people who have less money will tend to be less successful. And, and that's, that's based on a just, just an opinion. It's based on a fairly small set of data. And it doesn't mean that there aren't people that totally buck the trend who are very wealthy and then lose money or who are, uh, very uh, poor and who do very, very well. So for me, when I got started, trading initially was about supplementing income. And living in Vermont at that time, I really didn't need to make a lot to be successful in what I determined to be successful. So for me, $100 a day, $200 a day, that was fantastic. That, that would have been like me doing really well. Now, there's other people out there that 100, 200 a day isn't even going to make a dent. They need to be making a thousand a day or something like that. And so then, the, of course, the bar is set higher. So for me, with the bar set lower, having a year where I made thirty thousand, I was happy with that. A whole year making thirty thousand, I was happy with that. I thought that, that was good progress. Now, uh, when I ended up having years where I made six figures, I thought that was great too, but my bar was set lower. 
I did get myself into a position where I was up against the ropes. I did not have other sources of income. I was spending uh, money on credit cards for cost of living, and I was just barely paying my minimum, uh, you know, uh, my credit card payments. And I knew that I couldn't draw money out of my trading account to pay bills. So at that time, I was paying bills from my trading profits, like right from the account. So I might write a check for a bill, and I, I knew that by the time that check cleared, my account would be back below twenty-five thousand. So I had like three days until they cleared, until they received the check in the mail, to get my account up another fifteen hundred dollars, and that created a lot of stress and a lot of pressure. When I had a lot of stress and a lot of pressure, that's when it was most important for me to focus on the basics. Focus on the setups that I was the most confident in and trading less, not more. And then once I began to develop some confidence from trading less but generating profits, that's when I was able to start adding in more strategies and start trading more actively. And it didn't mean that I didn't hit bumps in the road after that because of course I did, but that was a big, um, that was a big turning point for me. So anyways, I just wanted to share that with you. I hope this has been helpful. I really encourage you guys to um, go ahead and uh, watch the two-hour um, special. You can uh, the link. You'll be able to watch it later, so you can. Uh, you don't have to watch it right now. You can save it and watch it tonight or tomorrow. Whatever, whatever's good for you, that's fine. I think you're going to get a lot out of it. I hope you really enjoy it, and uh, I hope that some of you guys uh, come over and join us at Warrior Trading in the chat room. I love being on YouTube, but. As always, um, in the chat room, YouTube has a uh, broadcast delay. Of course, you guys probably know that. YouTube, uh, in our chat room, we've got basically no delay, and uh, we have all the classes. So we'd love to have you guys come over and check it out. I hope you do. And I thank you for tuning in here today for this special live broadcast. So as I um, end it, I'll ask again. I hope you've hit the thumbs up. I hope you're subscribed to the channel. Next time I jump on and... Uh, go live, you'll get a notification if you're subscribed to the channel. And I'm going to put up uh, my disclaimer again as a reminder that trading is risky. My results are not typical. All right. So given that most traders lose money, you should assume you'll lose money and only trade with money you could afford to lose. And when you start trading, you should trade in a simulator. Don't put real money on the line until you've first proven profitability. Take it slow. All right, and with that, I will see you guys uh, tomorrow morning. Okay, I'll see you then.